so i stopped uh, with an example of simultaneous minimization of chi square for uh, nickel titanium bilayer film and uh, i justified the use of uh, genetic algorithm for such minimization i will now take you for a tour through the various instruments available for such experiments first let me just uh, show you the instrument that we have at dhruva at trombay india so this is the guide tube where the neutrons are coming flowing down the guide tube if i may say so in this direction and i had shown you earlier there is a small angle machine two small angle instruments on this guide at this gap we have what is known as our pnr or polarized neutron reflectometer this is uh, the whole instrument is kept inside a shielding pit because as i told you earlier that uh, reflected intensity falls as 1 by q to the power 4 with angle that means it falls very rapidly reflected intensity and we need to minimize the background at the detector to the extent possible for this instrument i'll quickly show you this is the instrument so here is a uh, closer look so the guide neutrons are flowing down in this direction we have got a silicon monochromator sitting at the guide path which diverts the beam in this direction and by s1 and s2 i mean two collimators two slits which make a collimator to collimate the beam to few arc seconds because we need to have a narrow beam for reflectivity experiment then there is a super mirror polarizer here i will shortly narrate to you what is a super mirror and how it works as a super mirror polarizer it's a, this instrument is meant for a vertical sample so there is a magnetic field here these are the pole shoes for the permanent magnet and the sample is vertical and here there is a position sensitive detector so we reach the detector after an analyzer which at the moment we don't use we don't analyze the beam reflected by the sample and this position sensitive detector arrays the reflected beam on it as per channel so it looks somewhat like this i have just shown you this point each experimental point at q space or it is as per angle but each point is actually an integration over such a intensity profile on the position sensitive detector and <clears throat> so each point is an integration over such values of reflected intensity after subtracting the background so we also take the background or uh, as channel wise on the phd after closing down the sample with a cadmium slit cadmium is a strong neutron absorber so we don't allow anything to come from the sample onto the detector and then we do the background measurements so that tells me how many neutrons are there stray neutrons are there in the in the guide hall it's much smaller than uh, what we have in the reactor hall and i have given the specifications here at the moment this specifications are slightly changed the wavelength we have gone up to 3 angstrom it's a cuaf titanium zirconium super mirror we also have a non polarized super mirror the detector is a linear helium 3 detector and uh, we have got a dc flipper neutron beam flipper in the with an efficiency of 92% and we have a 2 kilo gauss permanent field on the sample to magnetize the sample usually usually thin films have low saturation magnetization in their hysteresis loops if i may show you a hysteresis loop and generally you expect for magnetic moment density magnetic moment density we should saturate the thin film so that the magnetization is aligned in one direction and we can measure the magnetic moment density from a magnetized sample now this is a schematic of the same instrument 
so the guide gives a, it's a monochromator gives a beam out then there's a polarizer non polarizer super mirror so it polar it can polarize the beam then there's a dc flipper so i can get one particular polarization after reflection from the super mirror and then after that i can flip it to 180 degree away so on the sample i can have either up or down polarization neutrons which is either parallel or anti parallel to the magnetization in the sample this analyzer super mirror we generally don't use because of intensity restriction our source in dhruva is a low intensity source so often it is not used so what we get from such experiment is magnetic moment density if i do polarization analysis after the sample then we can get the magnetic structure i will give you an example later the position sensitive detector allows me to look at the specular reflectivity it can also help me to collect data in off specular mode if i look at the structure of the peaks that i showed you here and then i can also get off specular intensity that's an advantage of using the position sensitive detector but otherwise this instrument is a step scan instrument step scan it is not un, not like what i showed you earlier for the diffraction instrument that you collect the data in one shot here the sample is rotated around the beam in theta direction and if this is the position sensitive detector normal to the beam the reflected intensity moves channel wise on the detector and each integrated peak is one intensity in the reflectivity profile profile one intensity in the reflectivity profile so it's a step scan instrument but the use of psd helps us to collect off specular data i will use some examples later i just now explain talked about a neutron super mirror what is a neutron super mirror <coughs> now i will explain to you what is a neutron super mirror let us consider let's uh, magnetize nickel film nickel so as i told you earlier that for positive and negative direction of a neutron beam it sees different potentials for plus and minus neutrons so different critical angles so different critical angles for a single film if i consider theta then we have two different critical angles and theta critical angle is given by root over lambda root over pi b coherent plus minus b magnetic sorry i am mistaken by pi rho b coherent plus minus b magnetic by pi you have two critical this is for a single field now then there is a idea that if i have a bilayer of a magnetic and non magnetic materials then let us say i have got a periodic bilayer of let us say nickel and silicon nickel is magnetic silicon is non magnetic it's a periodic bilayer in that case apart from the critical angle for nickel i will also have a bragg peak depending on the periodicity at a q value which is commensurate with the d spacing because twice pi by d nickel plus d silicon will tell us where this bragg peak will be now this is a periodic bilayer with one periodicity 
now the interesting thing is that if I can keep changing the periodicity that means when I am depositing this multi-layer film I keep changing the periodicity by changing the thickness of nickel and silicon layers so let us say here for here it is D1 here it is D2 then it is D3 I continuously keep changing so I might consider this this is also periodic bilayer with varying thickness varying thickness now when I use a varying thickness <coughs> then the Q value or the angle for the bracket keeps shifting and if I keep on going to thicker and thicker film this Bragg peak will go to lower and lower theta lower and lower theta so with a multi layer with varying thickness varying thickness thickness I have got a number of Bragg peaks and as I keep on increasing the thickness from a certain value to a certain other D1 to D2 both for nickel and silicon the Bragg peak position keeps varying and ultimately what I get is intensity versus theta I will put if nickel was falling somewhere here now because of these Bragg overlapping Bragg peaks because they are finite film overlapping Bragg peaks I have extended the critical angle extended the critical angle and that's why it is called a super mirror a nickel film possibly will reflect total external reflection will take place up to a certain angle this angle is extended by using a periodic bilayer with varying thickness now this is possible because neutron is transparent neutron or rather not neutron most media most media are transparent parent to neutrons so neutrons can penetrate deeply and I can get a structure like this so this is a neutron super mirror now the next step now neutron super mirror is consisting of magnetic and non-magnetic material and I can magnetize the mirror and then this same intensity pattern either theta or Q if this is for positive then for negative the critical angle can be low so now this intensity tells me that the positive or up neutron because it sees a larger V because this is uh, twice pi h square by m rho V coherent plus Bm this critical angle for magnetic one will be large and now it is a varying thickness periodic by layer so plus will have a large critical angle and minus we have a smaller critical angle and this is the angle so if I use an angle to reflect the neutron beam which is between theta c if I may call it plus and theta c minus then this let us say this angle then at this angle this neutron doesn't get reflected the negative neutron has got a reflectivity zero whereas here the reflectivity is almost one so that means by reflection of an unpolarized beam at an angle between these two it will give me a polarized beam reflected and the transmitted beam will be other polarization so this is 
not only reflecting the neutron beam, it is also polarizing the neutron beam and this is called a super mirror polarizer. So I started describing to you how neutron reflective reflection takes place and now I show you a device based on the principle of reflection which can polarize a neutron beam and these super mirror polarizers are commercial items available and used heavily for various neutron instrumentation only that I will I have been showing you that we have used let me just show you the reflectivity profile obtained from this source of uh, M equal to 4 iron silicon super mirror now what is M equal to 4 usually super mirrors I will write it as SM are compared compared with nickel critical angle nickel has a critical angle nickel has a critical angle 6 arc minutes per angstrom what does it mean as I showed you that critical angle is directly proportional to if I uh, as I wrote earlier that uh, uh, critical angle is proportional to lambda so that means and this uh, nickel has critical angle 6 arc minutes per angstrom so that means if I have a 1 angstrom neutron the critical will be 6 arc minutes if I have a 4 angstrom neutron the critical will be angle will be 24 arc minutes so this is what means by 6 arc minutes per angstrom and now this mirror is an n equal m equal to 4 that means this has a critical angle for all wavelength which is 4 times that of nickel that means if I use a 4 angstrom neutron on this super mirror the critical angle will be 24 into 4 that is 96 arc minute that means 1 degree and 36 arc minutes 1 and half degree so this is the reflectivity plot of course this is in linear range because to show that where the other reflectivity minus falls to zero so this is a reflectivity curve this is the m value given so you can see this m equal to 4 the reflectivity intensity for one polarization is almost 80 percent not exactly one 80 percent so that is good enough if i reflect i get 80 percent of the beam reflected but because the minus neutron the, the down neutrons their reflectivity is fallen over here any angle in this range in this range for reflecting my neutrons will give me a polarized beam and the polarization efficiency is also plotted is almost 99 percent so i will get a 99 percent polarized neutron beam of up neutrons if i use a reflection angle which is qz value between these two and qz equal to 4 pi by lambda sine theta so i can calculate the theta for this this will as i showed you that for if the, it can go up to one and a half degrees and that's why it's called a super mirror and these are commercially available iron silicon super mirror the reflectivity plot is from this source so we use neutron super mirrors heavily for all our instruments so now i give you the schematic i showed you the schematic of the reflectometer at dhruva now i show you the typical general reflectivity prof ref uh, uh, reflectometer designs at uh, ICS. This is from the source. Mm. So you have a source and the slits collimate the beam. There is a monitor, and again there is a position sensitive detector arresting the beam because this is a polychromatic source. So in one setting, I can get a large range of Q. And I also mention that if I go by time of flight plot. I would like to mention to you 
that the reflectivity profile if I measure it as a function of time of flight intensity suppose I am taking talking about a single film then it will look somewhat like this here the key oscillation because time of flight large means this is large lambda and large lambda means small q so this is just the mirror image or rather if I look at a reflectivity plot in a reactor source the same thing will look like this intensity versus q so if this one is viewed from the back side of the page if I could, if you can go to the back of the board, you will get this pattern. This is just for information. So, intense reflected intensity in a time of flight plot will look like this. And in Q plot in the reactor, this is a reactor, this is a spallation source. They look a mirror image of each other in reflectivity profile.